Family is complicated. Family is much more than places and dates. To understand family, you must learn the family stories. Once you know the stories, you can start to understand this portrait of a family dinner. For another example, the following image documents the places and dates of Unix. But, to understand it, you need more info. You need the Unix stories and traditions. Unix is old enough to be a complicated family with stories and traditions. These four stories may help you understand Unix tradition. It doesn't matter if these stories are true or false. What matters is that versions of these stories exist in the culture of Linux. Hearing these four parables may help you understand Unix and its Linux grandson. The spirit of Unix existed at the dawn of computing. In those days, computing was a vast wilderness inhabited by giants and dinosaurs. All spirits dream. The Unix spirit dreamed of helping others. One bright morning, the Unix spirit was visited by three demons. The first demon was proprietary hardware. PH said, Give me your soul, and I will give you a powerful body. Unix said, I don't need you. I'm a spirit. I don't need a body. PH said, Do as you will. Here is a sample. Then the first demon disappeared, but it left a giant body crafted by the gnomes of digital. The second demon was proprietary software. PS said, Give me your soul, and I will give you a mighty voice. Unix said, I don't need you. I'm a spirit. I can make my own voice. P.S. said, Do as you will. Here is a sample. Then the second demon disappeared, but it left beautiful code that was elegant and powerful. The third demon was manipulation and control. M.N.C. said, Give me your soul, and I will give you control over everything around you. Unix hated the third demon. Unix turned its back and yelled for it to go away. M&C said, We shall see. And then the third demon disappeared. The Unix spirit desired the offerings of the two demons. Unix said, I deserve this. <laughs> and I can always stop using it. So the spirit of Unix took up the voice of the demon of proprietary software and the body of the demon of proprietary hardware and the giant called Unix was born. The second parable. The Life and Death of Unix. Unix did many great and wondrous things. Unix loved to help, and it was loved by those it helped. At first they liked Unix's strong body and beautiful voice, but they grew to love how Unix would help them solve their problems. Most of all, Unix would never tell them what they could and could not do. It just helped in whatever they tried. One dark night, when Unix was at the height of its powers, the three demons came to harvest Unix and feast on its soul. First, the demon of proprietary software took his voice back from Unix. And Unix found that it had forgotten how to speak without the demon's voice. 
Second, the demon of proprietary hardware took his body back from Unix. And Unix found that it had forgotten how to live without the demon's body. And so, Unix died. Then, the demon of manipulation and control reached out to bind the soul of Unix to the demon's feast. But the third demon could not grasp the soul of Unix. Unix had never exerted control over others. So the demon was powerless. The soul of Unix flew away to heaven. There it shines as an inspiration to all. Parable 3, the children of Unix. Unix had many children, which is strange when you consider that it never dated or <laughs> went outside. Some are children of Unix's voice, others are children of Unix's spirit, all of its children look to Unix for inspiration. After a time, most of the children of Unix separated into two groups. The first group of Unix children are guided by the monks of BSD. These monks withdraw from the world to isolated fortresses. The monks of BSD are united in their oath to never restrict the choices of others. They even respect the choice to deal with demons. Over time, the monks of BSD created five great fortresses. The followers of the fortress of NetBSD teach how to be thrifty and self-sufficient. A follower of NetBSD can survive anywhere on minimal resources. The followers of the fortress of OpenBSD develop resistance to almost all attack. The monks of the fortress of FreeBSD create code that speaks with the voice of angels. The keepers of the fortress of Solaris bargained with the three demons for ultimate power. For years Solaris ruled all the children of Unix. And then the demons came for Solaris. The demons consumed the soul of Solaris. And now the fortress of Solaris is a deserted ruin. The keepers of the fortress of Next bargained with the three demons for long life, fame, and fortune. After they concluded their deal, they renamed their fortress Apple OS X. The fortress of OS X is rich and famous to this day. The second group of Unix children are led by the priests of GNU. The priests of GNU try to do good works throughout the world. The greatest accomplishment of the priests of GNU are the three protective spells. These spells offer normal people protection from the seductive powers of the three demons. Any can use the protective spells, but they come with a cost. Each of the protective spells takes a portion of the user's soul and seals it away from the reach of the demons. GPLv1 spell takes a tiny part of the user's soul. GPLv2 takes a small part and GPLv3 takes a minor part of the user's soul. GPLv3 provides the most protection but many are afraid to commit so much of their soul to a spell. One of the early users of the GPL was TiVo. TiVo still managed to bargain with the demons for money and power. Eventually the demons consumed the soul of TiVo. But, but most of the time, the shield of the GPL allows the people of GNU to spread far and wide and do many good works. Almost all of those good works abide to this day, safe in the protection of the GPL. One of the most visible of these works is the Linux kernel. The Linux kernel is a vast playground where all the people of GNU can gather, work, and play. The Linux playground is protected by GPLv2. 
Many children are conceived in the Linux playground. Many good works are created there. But if you harbor a desire to be seduced, the demons can't be blocked forever. Parable 4, the grandchildren of Unix. The children conceived in the Linux kernel have become a vast horde. The horde of Unix is organized into three major and dozens of minor tribes. The major tribes of Linux are Debian. Debian is the largest tribe and some of Debian's notable children include Raspbian, Ubuntu, and Kali. The second largest Linux tribe is Red Hat. Some of Red Hat's notable children include Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Fedora, and Whitebox. And the third largest tribe of Linux is Slackware. <laughs> but Slackware doesn't much dote on her children. They have to fend for themselves. So, for example, Xubuntu is a descendant of Unix. Xubuntu is a child of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a child of Debian. Debian is a child of GNU via the Linux kernel. And GNU is a child of Unix. <laughs> These four parables are both true and false, but they may help you understand modern Linux.